you get that? I'm so confused. Also, ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. You only understand train station? It's all Greek to me. Understanding train station. Living between cultures with Josh and Faye. Welcome back to a new episode and we're back together in person. Yeah, I was going to say welcome back for those of you who are watching on YouTube right now. You can see that we are in the same place. And sometimes I wonder too if the audio quality is different or if you can tell oh. based off of the audio yeah. that we're together as opposed to uh I think you via can. Zoom. I would I guess think yes. For two reasons. First of all, the audio quality is usually really good when we record here. Yeah. And then also just the dynamic yeah, is Yeah, the back and forth dynamic. Uh we don't feel like we're How do, how, cutting each other off. Yeah, um, quite as much. Speaking. I mean, we still do, but it's not as weirdly. Yeah, it's as, not as awkward. Weird, yeah. Because <laughs> when it's on Zoom, it's always like, I say something because I thought you were done, but there's like a slight delay. Yeah. And so then you were going to say something after all. And I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. And then we're both like, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> yeah. it's uh, So it's nice when we have the opportunity to record in person. And I yes. think when I was in Cincinnati last... Did we record an episode? We recorded that one live episode. We did the live. Yeah, exactly. We did the live, but that's also different. Yeah, so, that was uh, very different. <laughs> yes. It was our first time. A little bit of a fail at first. but It uh, was fun, though. Yeah, yeah. It was really fun. And I know that we want to do an another one of those, yeah. which I think in May I'll be back in Cincinnati. So maybe mm -hmm. that would be a good opportunity kind for of us like to... every few months at this point. Yeah. Yeah, for those of you who... Um, Don't, don't see us we're in the munich setting mm, in mm -hmm. case you're wondering so i'm currently in munich i think i mentioned it in the last episode that i was coming here you made it <laughs> for carnival yeah it was uh not very easy because there was an airport strike so my first flight got canceled completely the day before and of course the airport strike was in germany mm -hmm. which i mean i think it's great that there's unions and everything it was just a very unfortunate timing it was literally the friday before carnival yeah. um the munich security conference was going on that weekend um school break was starting which so is probably were... why they chose that timing yes. <laughs> yes but it affected a lot of people yeah because of that including myself um and then they booked me onto a new flight and then that flight got delayed and then i missed my connection and it was a whole thing but i finally made it here oh, you did you did it was interesting too like to be around with the munich security council mm -hmm. or a security conference or whatever it's called Uh, just lots of protests in the street and lots of political demonstrations. Yeah. I remember it last year as well, because mm -hmm. it happens every year. Um, but yeah, this year was just weird. Um, especially where I live, protesters were walking by and mm -hmm. I didn't agree with what they were protesting. Uh, what, so What did they protest? They were uh, mostly protesting the, the, how do you say, Waffenlieferung. Ah, uh, uh, the, gun. Yeah, the weapon supply, uh, weapon supply to, yeah. to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And there was lots of people chanting, like, there were signs that said, Ami, go home. Mm, I think you sent me that or yeah, posted about yeah, it or Yeah, or something. showed you. Mm -hmm. And then also, like, Frieden schaffen ohne Waffen was their 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 scream, which is uh, work towards peace without weapons, mm -hmm. which would be wonderful. But I don't necessarily agree that that's possible in this conflict. Yeah. Um, so I was sitting there in the window just like, hmm. <laughs> I don't agree with. It. I mean, I, hey, I fully support their 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 right to protest. Yeah. I just disagree with what they're protesting. Yeah, it's always um, crazy with the Munich uh, Security Conference because yeah. they'll like in some places um, close up. Gullies? What's a gully? I have no clue. <laughs> um, the What hole, is a the um, hole in the ground that goes down to the sewer. Oh, man, uh, sewer manhole. System. Yeah, manhole. Manhole. Yeah. See, I did not know that word. For I didn't know gully. <laughs> it's a gully. Um, Yeah, they sometimes close those up for really? security reasons. I, mean, I, I think it makes in, like, sense, but... in the like hot areas. Yeah, yeah. And streets are always closed like crazy. So yeah. it's a very big event every year. And it was going on during Carnival. Yeah. So, which was, this weather in Munich has been crazy lately because we, we met up for Carnival. Uh, on Fat Tuesday. On, yeah, on yeah. Fat Tuesday. <laughs> and we were like super hot. I got sunburnt while I was out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it, it was, was super like warm. 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Which, so what was that in? around 70 Fahrenheit. So I think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still so bad with that. Like I, I think it was high 60s, low 70s. Yeah. Something like that. I kind of know when you tell me a Fahrenheit um, number, I kind of know if it's warm or cold. Yes. But I still don't know the exact, uh, what's Conversion. the word? Conversion. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing for me. Like, I know what both temperatures feel like, but I can't mm. tell you what the other temperature is. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it was really warm. And now it's snowing. It's been yeah. snowing the last couple of days. Yep. 
back to winter. <laughs> and I'm super happy because I found a good Mexican restaurant the other night too. I say I found. I got a recommendation from uh, another Mexican friend mm -hmm. who had lived in, in Munich for a bit. And it's a place called Sol de Mexico mm -hmm. in Marktschwaben. So not really in uh, Munich, but in kind of a suburb or a town close to Munich. So if you guys are in the Munich area and you want good Mexican food, I would recommend them. That is a very, very valuable yes. tip because there mm -hmm. is not a lot of good Mexican food yes. in Munich and in Germany in general, which I know we've mentioned before <laughs> <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> which kind of plays into the topic for this week, mm -hmm. which is first impressions slash culture shocks when we move to our respective countries where we live now. Yeah. So me in Germany, you in the US. Yeah. And for me, it's it was not necessarily a culture shock or a first impression, but it was just something that I had to get used to was not being able to have good Mexican yeah, food. I know. Which we've talked about so many times on I this know, podcast, so we, don't, we don't have to go into detail again <laughs> on it, but we both have kind of prepared just our, a few thoughts of what we had um, or what our first impressions were. Yeah, some of my things that I actually um, wrote down specifically for this episode, because I kind of have like a whole YouTube channel on this topic of things that I noticed. Yeah. So um, for me specifically, I wrote down things that I didn't know were going to be a thing in the US, like things that I just did not expect, because there was a lot of culture shocks that I kind of knew I was going to mm -hmm. run into in terms of, you know, just everyday life, social life, small talk, yeah. communication, driving, not a lot of walking, et yeah. cetera, right? There's a lot of things that you kind of know before you go into that, even just picked up as a tourist while being mm -hmm. in the U.S. But there were a few things that I just had no clue whatsoever mm -hmm. that that was going to be a thing during my life in the U.S. So that's kind of what I focused on today yeah and for me i feel like because i had so many german friends and like was in germany quite a bit before ever moving here i felt relatively well prepared and don't feel mm -hmm. like i had too many of those situations where i was like i had no clue that this was going to be a thing yeah. but mine are more just like things that i knew about but it's different when you experience it for the first time yeah like for me just one quick example i just was thinking of that i hadn't written down was like the way that deliveries work like when you mm -hmm. order something on Amazon, I think it's because I grew up in suburbia and just in the Midwest, but right. like I live now in a building where there are multiple families. Like how do deliveries work in a city, you yeah. know? And the fact that like they're UPS trucks, quote unquote, that are bicycles. Yeah. Like I, those are things <laughs> like I would, I never saw in Cincinnati or in the US, but it was something that I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense and it's really cool. Or even like the the fact that there are like the the how do you say mailmen or mail mail delivery people mm -hmm. uh, who ride their bikes from door to door. Yeah, yeah, that's super normal, even like in suburbia in Germany. Yeah, and that's just something that I don't know from the U.S. And like right. I said, it it's not that it doesn't exist in the U.S. But having grown up in suburbia and then living in a city, it was always either like the mail truck, mm -hmm. like the like the little, yeah, mail truck, basically. And those look so old-fashioned. Yeah. They? They're so, they look straight, like, out of the 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are. They probably are, too. Yeah. Or, like, I know in the U.S. it's very common for, in some neighborhoods, to have a mailman that, like, walks from door to door. Yeah. But on a bike, I hadn't seen before. Yeah. So, like, those are weird little differences that, or that's one example of differences yeah. that I, I wasn't expecting. Totally. Like, uh, on that topic, I mean, in the U.S., like, I've only ever lived in places that had either, like, a porch, even when I was a student, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in the student area in Cincinnati, there's a lot of just one-family houses that mm -hmm. students live in, and you have your porch, or even if it's, like, kind of a different kind of building, there's still... A there's going to be some kind of like entry area where Amazon delivery people just drop off the package. They'll, yeah. they'll just put it on the mm -hmm. ground and you don't have to be home for it. Yeah. Here, however, <laughs> in a lot of cases, here I don't in know. Germany, yeah. yeah, here in Germany, that can work very differently. Like mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, if you're not home, they're going to have to drop it off with a oh, neighbor. I got, or... <laughs> so, I got so mad the other day. I don't know if I was telling you about this. Uh -uh, I don't think but so. I was home. All of my roommates oh, were home. That's, yeah. And they said that no one answered, but I literally was home the entire time. No one rang the bell. And then they gave they give you an address that you have to go to pick it up mm -hmm. like the following day between these times or any time after 11. I go to the address where they told me to go to pick it up. And they said, oh, the delivery man made a mistake. It's actually at a different location. Oh, my God. So I had to go like 20 minutes to this original place and another 20 minutes to another place. Mm -hmm. 
it was so annoying. Oh man. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a difference, for yeah. example, that you would just never really think about. And then suddenly, I mean, obviously I order a lot of stuff online and I feel like everyone kind of orders oh. stuff online every now and then. So Definitely. it's something you have to deal with all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just was like, that's, that's one example. And like I said, it's not necessarily a US versus Munich thing, but I think it's living in a big city. Cincinnati doesn't qualify for me as a big yeah. city, or at least where most people live isn't actually in the city. Right. Um, so I don't know what it's like, in, for example, in Chicago or New York when you truly live in the city. Yeah. But it was a, yeah, that was an adjustment for me. Yeah. What else is on your list? Well, I guess that wasn't even on your yeah, list. Yeah, that wasn't so. on my list. But I do also, <laughs> on the top of my list is everything is small. Right. Um, yep. And that's something that I think everyone is aware of yeah. in general. But then when you experience it, I'm I'm sure that's a whole different story. Yeah, it's a good, especially when driving. Mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest adjustment for me or like realization of like, oh shit, this stuff actually, this place is really small, especially at my previous employer. I worked out in the countryside a little mm -hmm. bit more and I had to drive through a couple villages to get to the office and the streets are so small and you'll have this huge tractor coming towards you that is covering, in my opinion, more than half of the road. Right. And the Germans just drive by it like it's no problem. And I was like freaking out because I'm so used to having so much space in the yeah. US. Yeah. Um, it was funny the other day, um, a friend of mine was helping me drive and he was driving my car. Okay. Uh, and he's, uh, it's Lachlan, the the Australian. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, in Australia, I assume it's more similar, like in the US where you have more space. And like we were passing through one of those areas where it just was relatively small. And I could tell he was driving extra slow. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that I used to drive when I first moved to Germany. And my coworkers would make fun of me. Like, why are mm -hmm. you driving so, thro <laughs> so, thro so slow through here? Yeah. There's so much space. Um, but yeah, definitely. I noticed that in the driving aspect of things. Yeah. Um, and then just like cars being small, like they're, like I said, the, like the delivery thing kind of plays into that too. Like mm -hmm. rather than having a post truck or a mail truck, you have like the little, the bike. Yeah. It's just, everything is on a smaller scale. I think also we've talked about this in the differences in one of our first episodes, like the differences between homes. Yeah. Uh, how small everything is like the little right. shoebox. uh, um, uh, Waschbecken. Sink. Sinks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, my brain. Um, but yeah, everything being small. Yeah. And I'm I, I'm sure that's what a lot of Germans say when they go to the U.S. for the yeah, first time. Of too, course. Yeah. Everything is big in the yeah, U.S. Yeah. You see these streets with like six or seven lanes and you're like, oh, my God, where am I? And you're yeah. just like in a random city in the Midwest. You're not even like in one of the big cities yeah. you know that's just always crazy like seeing exactly. these intersections especially with like so many lanes and so many traffic lights mm -hmm. that just feels super super american yeah. and of course the supermarkets i think that's another thing you just go yes. to the supermarket yes, for exactly. the first time as a german in the u.s and you're like what is this place and this is like gonna be a whole hike to get yeah. through here yeah yeah for sure for sure <laughs> um yeah supermarkets that was an adjustment for me as well but them being small. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that kind of leads me into another point that I had on my list was the lack of personal space. Mm. And again, I think this is also a difference between like living in the Midwest as opposed to living in a bigger city. Um, I mean, I know that Nelf always talks about that too. And he's from Portland. Yeah. I guess he's more from suburbia, but still like it might definitely be a cultural difference too. Yeah. But like, and the weird thing is I've gotten used to it now. Mm. So when I go back to the U S it's a, an adjustment for me. To have people... So, basically, in Germany, no one cares how close they are to other people. Yeah. Like, it's normal when I'm walking on the street, especially in downtown Munich, that someone will bump into me mm -hmm. and just not say anything. Yeah. That's why I say I think in New York, it's probably a little bit more like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and like, that would never happen in Cincinnati. That no one... That you just wouldn't say anything. But now I don't say stuff... Or excuse myself or say mm -hmm. sorry when I bump into someone in downtown Munich. Because it's just kind of normal. You're just, yeah. like, lots of people. Um, but... In the grocery stores, for example, like I knew everything was smaller and that people's personal bubble or personal space bubble was smaller in, in Europe, but it's different when you experience it. Yeah. Like when I'm trying to reach for something on the shelf and the person just doesn't move. Yeah. And they don't care. And they don't care <laughs> that I'm reaching literally right in front of them. Yeah. Like maybe three inches away from their body. Yeah. And they just stand there still looking at whatever they're, they're looking at on the shelf. That was an adjustment for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I felt very much like the Midwest. We're like, oh, I'm sorry. Can I get by? And, yeah. <laughs> um, but now when I go to the U.S., it's weird because I'm uncom not uncomfortable, but it's weird for, pe for me to have people constantly saying, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
That's when my life. When like, it feels yeah. like they're a mile away. <laughs> that was my like, experience what? at first. It was like, so weird. The first times I experienced that, I think that's very specific to the Midwest too. That yeah. like in the store, if you're in the same aisle and the aisles are even like much, mm-hmm. much bigger in American stores and they're just like kind of walking somewhat closely past you they're gonna say excuse me and at first i always thought i did something wrong i was like what or yeah. you know something was going on i was like why are they saying excuse me yeah because <laughs> they're yeah. not even close to touching me yeah yeah exactly <laughs> like now it wouldn't cross my mind to say excuse me in a circumstance like mm-hmm. that and now i just kind of laugh when i hear hear it when i'm back home in, in cincinnati it's like yeah. oh <laughs> yeah you're so close <laughs> excuse me <laughs> excuse you like you're entering my personal space right now oh. Whereas here I'm used to people bumping into me. Yeah. So that was definitely something that was like a first impression. Not really first impression, but a a culture shock more than anything. That, like I said, I knew was a thing. But it's one thing to know it and it's another to experience it. Yeah, for sure. The same goes for people being just rude. Mm. (laughs) That's obviously rude. Is There's a little bit of judgment in that. But just not necessarily the most friendly. Oh, we're gonna get so many comments again on this. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's true. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like it's every time that we mention like our experiences in with German customer service yeah. or something like that. There's always a few Germans in the comments yeah. saying like, "Oh no!" Like it's not just, always like you're that. judging it wrong. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I agree with you. It's not always like that. Yeah. Like that. I recently had a really good customer experience. Yeah, of um, course, those exist experience. too. Yeah, they're just not necessarily the norm i would say the norm is always like kind of average medium Uh but then it happens that kind of a lot that you have rude people it definitely happens more than in the the u.s that's for sure and then it also sometimes happens that you have really really good experiences Mm -hmm. but also definitely not as often as it happens in the u.s exactly but i think that was like a thing that i had to get used to and struggled with at first like i knew that this was a thing that people just aren't as friendly Mm -hmm. um that people just aren't as friendly, but it's one thing to know it and it's another to experience yeah. it when you're constantly going into a bakery and just like people, they, they look at you almost aggressively, like, come on, mm. order. Yeah. Um, or also the way that people even order in Germany, I think is, it's not rude. It's just very direct and lacks the, I should say it lacks a lot of the things that are important to Americans in raising children as well. Mm-hmm. Like being very overly polite to people you don't know. No. What I think of is when I'm standing in the line at the bakery and people say, ich bekomme, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 which is completely normal in Germany. Or ich kriege. Yeah, so like I'll get or I'll take. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Or I get, yeah. I get or... It, to me, it sounds like they're saying, uh, give me. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, that's exactly that would be the best translation that's not a literal translation but um, but it's a very content. direct way yeah. of ordering whereas in the US it, it's could I please have could I get blah 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 like a, a more roundabout way of asking for it yeah. and I still don't order like ich bekomme oder ich kriege what do you say I say könnte ich bitte etwas yeah. blah, 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 haben. I mean that works too or, or yeah. ich hätte gern blah 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 mm-hmm. uh, it's just to me sounds nicer and I can't bring myself to be that direct as mm. the Germans. And like you said, it's not everyone that orders that way. And it's not everyone that's that rude. But for me, it was very off-putting at first. Mm. Um, totally get that, yeah. I'm like, I oh, had that as part of, put, of my... Puts me defensive. Yeah, I had that as part of my reverse culture shock experience too. Yeah. That I never noticed it being weird or rude at first, like in my whole life. I mean, it was just normal to me. Yeah. And then I came back from the U.S. and that was one of my first experiences. I've talked about this before where I literally, same thing. I went to a bakery. Yeah. Um, and I was like, wow, that just kind of ruined my mood. <laughs> or like I, I think of other experiences too, like when I bought my car, for example, or when I go into a place that I need to interact with a customer service person. Mm-hmm. In the U.S., people tend to come up to you proactively. Yeah. And I say, hey, welcome to blah, blah, blah. How can I help you? Whereas here in Germany, I feel when I'm in a situation where I need help from someone from a company, it's like, oh, I'm bothering you by asking for help is the impression that I get. And that's something I didn't necessarily expect. I knew that people were very direct Mm. and that it could be off-putting, but I didn't expect to have the feeling of me inconveniencing people so often. Yeah. And I'm, this isn't hate. It's just uh, me coming from a country in a culture where that's not a thing. Yeah. No, but I mean, I know we've talked about this before. And if you disagree with that with us, that's totally fine. You definitely yeah. have the right to do so. But that's the same for me. I never knew that this was something that 
whatever bother me. Like it was normal to me. And then obviously mm-hmm. in the U.S. at first I thought, oh, everything's so over the top and yeah. way too friendly and fake and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I then came back here for the first time, and even now when I'm here for a longer period of time, it really bothers me that people give me that feeling that i'm bothering them because i'm just here to like pay money to you guys like i mean it depends on the situation right but in most cases it's like you're in a store or a restaurant and the waiter gives you the feeling like oh great another customer exactly what do you want (laughs) you know kind of like that and i don't they don't even have to be over the top like that it's just the way that they carry themselves the way that they say certain things makes you feel that way or as you said that they don't come to you and you have to come to them and be like excuse me could you maybe serve us thank you (laughs) yeah and i'm not saying that in the u.s it's better per se because i really don't like when i'm in the environments where like i feel like there's a customer service voice that people put on in the u.s we talked about this before i think yeah and i i really do not like that um but the general Die Grundeinstellung, like like the attitude, yeah, general the general attitude. attitude that is that Americans have of like, oh, let me go out ask this person. Like, it's my job to go yeah. help them. Yeah, that's what I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and that's one thing that was hard for me to adjust to in Germany. Yeah. I think at this point I'm used to it, um, and it doesn't upset me that much anymore because you just kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, but it's a huge difference between knowing and experiencing it and having to get used to it. Yeah. For sure. That was um, another thing that stood out to me. I think also, and I knew this from a lot of the friends that I had from university that were exchange students from Europe or from Germany in Cincinnati, but like the worldview mm-hmm. is very different from at least the Midwestern point of view, mm-hmm. where in the Midwest, I feel like many things are America centric or US centric. Um And it's always seen through, like, the U.S. lens, the rest of the world. Which, of course, no matter what country you're in, there's going to be some tilt of the view based off of the culture that you're in and where you're getting your news from. But I just felt like generally people here in Germany are much more informed about the world as a whole Mm -hmm. than they are in the U.S. And I'm not saying that Americans are bad for that. I think it has to do with the media environment that we're raised in. Yeah. And the relative isolation that we have when it comes to interactions with other countries. But I think just the general knowledge that people have in Europe on average seems to be more well-educated when it comes to the world as a whole, like geography or like political systems. Mm -hmm. It just is, it's different. And like I said, I'm not trying to hate on the U.S. by that, but I definitely think that's a big difference. I I knew that was the case, but I think I've been surprised, especially in Germany, because Germans love to travel, how many places people have been here Mm -hmm. and what what knowledge and experiences they bring with Mm -hmm. them from their travels and just from their schooling um, that I felt like isn't as prevalent in the Midwest, at least. And that's something that I really enjoy about being here is because I felt like when I was in the Midwest, a lot of the conversations that I enjoy having where it was harder to find people who were on the same level as as far as interest is concerned. Yeah. Not necessarily not necessarily even knowledge, but true interest of like I don't like to talk about football. People try mm. to make small talk with me about football. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um but if we're talking about politics or I don't know, international relations, I think that yeah. stuff or is languages. Su- or languages. <laughs> yeah. I find all of that super interesting. And maybe I'm a little bit in a bubble here in Munich with the people that I spend my time with, but I mean, a lot of multilingual people and people, like I said, people who are well-traveled, I just find a lot more here, which makes sense because other countries are closer, Yeah. but that's something I really enjoy about being here. Yeah. And I think I knew that was the case, but it, I, I, I really appreciate that even more after mm-hmm. being here. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Just one thing that popped into my mind was, I think I mentioned this maybe at the time, but throughout the presidential elections, both mm-hmm. of like the one in 2016 and the one in... 2020, mm-hmm. I was kind of surprised by how on my social media um, and just like in general in my life, my German friends seem to be much more invested in the elections than yeah. my American friends. And yeah. that was kind of like odd. Yeah. <laughs> like I saw people post about it much more, talk about it much more. Mm-hmm. Germans would ask me all the time what people are saying in the US, like what my social circles, like how they're feeling about the election. I was like, 
nobody's talking about it honestly yeah. like but that's not a big topic yeah. <laughs> i don't even know i mean of course i knew from like certain close friends but it was just not that big of a topic so that was one exactly. of those topics where i was like huh weird that germany seems to be almost as invested in this mm -hmm. as the us is and like in a day-to-day -day life it's almost more prevalent because we just talk about politics more i think <laughs> yeah and i think it also kind of makes sense because us policy influences germany significantly yeah. Yeah, course, in yeah. europe Whereas German policy doesn't really influence no, the I U.S. Meant, as much. But, but I meant the American. I, no, no oh, okay. I know. But I'm just saying generally in the U.S. I feel like people are like, yeah, it's politics. It's mm. it's just another election. Yeah. And in the end, it doesn't change that much of their everyday life. Besides mm -hmm. just, I don't know, did the party that they want to win win or the candidate. As opposed to the implications that American elections can have abroad yeah. and on the, the international stage. And, yeah, the world, yeah. So I think it makes sense to a certain extent that maybe Americans are more, I don't want to say lackadaisical, but a little not as invested or not yeah. as interested in it as maybe Europeans would be. Yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on your bubble that you're in also, yeah. but it's also just a cultural difference that it's not a small talk topic no. like politics. No. <laughs> uh, whereas in Germany, I feel like it very much is. So like people talk about it all the time. So I think that's also part of it. <laughs> yeah, like I, an example was with these protests that were going on with the Munich Security Council, I messaged some friends like mm -hmm. with a picture of the, the flag that said, Ami, go home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't believe these people, blah, 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 blah. I understood the point that they were trying to make the yeah, protests. Yeah. Um, but then after the fact, I realized that someone in the um, in the group chat that I was in probably would agree with a lot of the political mm -hmm. opinions. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, no, I hope I didn't make her uncomfortable by expressing my distaste with these protests, which I felt like was a, in that moment a very American mm -hmm. thing. Like, oh, no, I, I talk too much about politics uh, with this, with this person, I mean, with this person, I'd also had a debate about the existence of NATO. Yeah. So I, we were comfortable with talking about politics, yeah. but in an American context, that would be like, oh my gosh, I've destroyed this friendship by being so direct with my right. my political feelings about this. Yeah. Now I feel like in in Germany, it always depends on the group you're in, but yeah. in most environments, like all these social environments I've ever been in, um, political discussions are very normal and yeah. not taken very personally yeah exactly so. it's just a difference of opinion yeah and i think that kind of goes into what i was um whatever done in this next point where people seem to be more mature and independent mm -hmm. in germany and i don't that i don't want to like hate on americans by saying that but i just think in germany you're given a lot more responsibility at a younger age you can travel independently because of public transportation. Yeah. You're allowed to drink alcohol at a younger age. There just seems to be a little bit more culture of independence of youth than there is in the U.S., where in the U.S. it's much more protective of the youth mm. in the sense of, like, I don't want anything bad to happen, so I'm going to be very, very controlling. Um, that I think in the German version leads to more independent uh, young adults, I'll say. Mm -hmm. And... That's something that I think I knew, but it's it's just when you're surrounded by all of these people that I feel are very, very independent and very mature for their ages compared to how I was used to it from the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, that was just an adjustment. It just was an interesting observation. Yeah, I think living in Europe, also interacting with other countries and traveling internationally more, um, it kind of goes hand in hand. And... I don't want to get hate in the comment section because it's a very strong statement to say that Germans are more mature and more independent than Americans. I'm trying to figure out exactly like the fine, the like where the fine line is, but it's just been my 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 perception. So I've met some very smart Americans and very mature Americans and very independent Americans as well. But I just think the general populace. Yeah. No, um, I totally know what you mean. And I think a lot of it just has to do with exposure. Yeah. Which Americans aren't necessarily given the exposure that your Germans are yeah. in this context. So, yeah, and that's enough on that controversial topic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that's a very controversial topic. That's just a personal observation. <laughs> yeah. And then the only the only other thing I have written down is ease of public transportation. Yeah. And I think from my perspective, especially growing up in the Cincinnati area or in the Midwest as opposed to like the East Coast where there is more public transportation, I don't think I've realized how much I was missing out on mm -hmm. as far as like not constantly having to Uber places or 
I mean, quote unquote, worry about parking as much as you can truly worry about parking in Cincinnati because you almost always find a parking spot. Yeah. But like, who's going to be the DD mm-hmm. and designated yeah, driver? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to be the designated driver and not drink alcohol that evening? Or like the fact that people don't need cars here necessarily. Yeah. If you, of course, if you live out in the countryside, a car is necessary. But the fact that you can get around the city really without needing a car or get around cities or between cities, yeah. like the strength of the German public transportation network or European public transportation network has really astounded me. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool. Like I can be in Paris in five and a half, six hours yeah. by train. And yeah, like, <laughs> I just leave my house with my suitcase and show up in Paris. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just something I'm really not used to from the U S. Yeah. Um, and that's just been something that I've really enjoyed even though I do have a car here and I enjoy traveling by car as well, but taking the subway, taking the tram, taking the bus, like those are all things that I really enjoy and walking places. It's a walkable city, Munich. Those are things that I knew, of course, like, you know, on paper that Europe has a good rail network and Germany has a good rail network. Yeah. But it's different when you get to experience and use it on a regular basis. And I'm sure you can relate to missing that when you're in the U S yeah. I I mean, so now, at first, it really sucked because I didn't have a car. Yeah. Ever since I got a car, it, I don't really miss it that much anymore because, yeah. as you said, Cincinnati is a very drivable city yeah. and you can park places and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I've definitely become Americanized in that <laughs> sense that I don't always miss having to squeeze in with all these other people and stuff. Yeah. But, of course, like, I do think that, that it's amazing that we have that. I mean, I never needed a car living in Munich. Yeah. I did have a car for a little bit, but not really because I needed it. I kind of inherited it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes having a car was more stress than, exactly. you know, it had it had advantages because mm-hmm. you always had to find parking. Then you maybe you have to pay for parking yeah. or you have to pay for a garage spot like in a yeah. in an underground garage in Munich or something like that. Or you have to pay for a parking license in certain areas. It's, it can get complicated. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, gas is more expensive mm-hmm. here. But yeah, I mean, generally, those were the main impressions slash culture shocks that I had. Yeah. Or I guess for me, framing it in the sense of things I knew but was surprised by when I first actually experienced yeah. it. The whole personal bubble thing, something popped into my mind because I've been going to a bunch of different doctors while I'm mm-hmm. here. Not because I'm sick or anything. I just kind of do my routine checkups in Germany. Mm-hmm. And so I was at a practice the other day and I kind of noticed it there because like, I feel like at the doctors and Germans are very privacy loving. People mm-hmm. don't like to share a lot of their personal information with strangers in Germany. Yeah. But and I kind of noticed that they're like at the front desk mm-hmm. at the practice, people were just so close to each other. And like, obviously I could hear everything the person in front of me said, but mm-hmm. I was, I kind of stood further back at first, but then more people lined up behind me and they didn't really have space. So kind of had to yeah. um, scooch up a little bit or what's the mm-hmm. word? I had to uh, move forward a little bit. And the person behind me was also super close. And when I gave my information, she could obviously hear everything. Yeah. So that was I was kind of like, huh, interesting. I feel like, I mean, obviously I grew up in this country and that's all I knew before I ever moved abroad. But I, that was just one of those moments where mm-hmm. I noticed like, oh, wow, even here, the personal bubble is much smaller. Yeah. Even though you'd think maybe at the doctor's it's different, but it's not. <laughs> the waiting room at my doctor's office is so small. Yeah, most of them are well. really small. It's crazy. Yeah. And then you have this weird thing that like this is the one place in the world where Germans say hello to yeah. each other. <laughs> confusing. <When> you, <laughs> confusing. When you walk into a waiting room at the doctor's and you're the one walking and you're supposed to say hello to everyone and then mm-hmm. s- most of the people or a lot of them will kind of recognize you, say hello back or nod yes. at you and then you sit down. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's the, that's the um, etiquette or how do you say it? Eti- etiquette. Etiquette, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and then also I noticed that same day because I walked into the doctor's office and I forgot that you still need masks for those yeah. in Germany. And I thought I had a mask. Like I walked in, I was like, oh, I think I have a mask somewhere in my bag, but I didn't. So I asked the front desk lady if they had any. And instead of, you know, saying like, yeah, of course, no problem. She was like, yeah, three euros, please. <laughs> like it was just very like, yeah. here you go, three euros. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, without even, euro. yeah, yeah, without even saying hello or anything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. I was all like, ah, ex- excuse me, like, I'm really sorry. I forgot a mask. Would you, do you have one for me? And she's yeah. like, yeah, three euros. <laughs> <laughs> it's very direct. So that was also one of those experiences where I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm in Germany. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, that's pretty much it from my side. Yeah. Uh, what about you? I'm interested to hear some of these things 
that you've experienced okay, or so were surprised by? Yes. These are the things that I just did not know before I came and lived in the U.S. Because I had already been to the U.S. as a tourist a few times, but these were just not really topics that I encountered as a tourist. Mm -hmm. um, and these are pretty much all topics that I've talked about before on my YouTube channel. So you guys might already know what's on my list, but I kind of wanted to just summarize it for the podcast. Number one is people using regular text message mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. talk to each other, a.k.a. SMS in German. Yeah. I hadn't written a SMS in years at that point like that. I don't know when SMS died out, but you don't really get SMS unless it's like some kind of service SMS, like yeah. from your, you know, cell phone provider exactly. or something like that. You get off the airport and then you get the automatic or get off the roaming. airplane and get the roaming message. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody really uses SMS to communicate with their friends or family. Most people in Germany use WhatsApp or other messaging apps like telegram or signal or something yeah. like that and that has been a thing since like maybe 2011 or so i would mm -hmm. i would say 2011 2012 so yeah and then i come to the u.s and there I, i'm all like uh i couldn't find you on whatsapp did i get your phone number right and they were all like whatsapp what's that <laughs> i had no clue what whatsapp was yeah. before i came to germany for the first time so i did not know that whatsapp was not a thing in the US. Yeah. I was not aware of that. And at first it was a little annoying because I had an Android. And oh. I think now you can like easily communicate in group chats with iPhone people and Android. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, for some reason, at least for my phone, it didn't really work. So to give you guys some context with the text messages, I feel like the majority of people, at least people that I know have iPhones. So yeah. when they do use regular text messages, as I said, in most cases, it's the blue messages that are actually iMessage. Yeah. So they are like a internet-based messenger, but it's like it automatically converts it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of difficult to explain if you've never used an iPhone before, yeah. which I know a lot of our German um, viewers and listeners probably haven't. But basically, it's like you send an SMS and it just automatically converts it yeah, to a messenger. Yeah, basically, your phone recognizes that the person you're sending it to also has an iPhone. Yeah, so it, it only it works between iPhones and other Apple devices, yeah. I guess, if you connect it. And that way, people make groups. Like you have a WhatsApp group, you have like just... A, text message group basically yeah. and it's like a regular group chat but when you don't have an iphone for me back in the day i didn't get the iMessage feature on my phone because I, I had an Android and then all the group messages arrived on my phone separately. So yeah. I didn't have like a group that opened. I just got like a bunch of different separate messages from different phone numbers yeah. and it was all confusing and crazy. So then like, for example, with my roommates at the time, we had to use an, a special app called GroupMe. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> GroupMe is the thing that I remember using in university. Mm -hmm. And that was literally just for group chats. Yeah, you can send personal messages on it, but no one does. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people use it for that reason. So yeah, for like university groups, if you have a study group, you have to coordinate something, yeah. people would have a group me, which I always thought was just odd that then for that reason, you make like you use a special app yeah. <laughs> just for that. Um, so yeah, that was my number one kind of, I guess, shock and surprise at first. Uh -huh. I had just never heard that in any of the movies. And, you know, we think that we know so much about American culture, but yeah. that topic never came up. <laughs> it's a really good point, though, because, I mean, it's not just Germany that uses WhatsApp. It's literally the rest of the world minus China. Yep. And they the have US. Their own, they have their yeah. own, what is it called, WeChat. WeChat, yeah. Whereas in the literally everywhere else, I feel like, uses WhatsApp besides yep. the US. And that was something I tried to train my family on because it just was easier yep. for me to stay in contact with them that way. Yeah. Because I am constantly on WhatsApp, but it's just something that hasn't caught on with them. So I still have to use the iMessenger app for my family too. Yeah, and I, to this day, I'm kind of wondering why that is. I've talked about it on my YouTube channel before and people are all like, oh, it's because it belongs to Facebook now. And no, that's not we're why. all afraid of like selling our data. And it's like, Americans literally share everything on yeah. Facebook. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's because it's just, I think they just have a bad advertising. Mm -hmm. Like it just hasn't been a thing that people know about. I also, this is my theory, just because of the amount of iPhones in yeah. the U.S., there's just, I guess, no necessity yeah, for it. Yeah, there's a lack of the need for it, yeah. for sure. And that's also something that I say sometimes, that there's a lot of iPhones in the U.S., and then a lot of people say, oh, that's not true, if you look at the numbers. I can just say from my personal, I think the numbers are definitely higher. They're just not that significantly higher that you would think that, you know, nobody mm -hmm. needs WhatsApp if you look at the actual statistics. But at least in my experience, I know very few people in the yeah. U.S. that have an Android. I'm like thinking through my whole family and <laughs> Like who of the text messages pops exactly. up green? Exactly. <laughs> very, very few. Yeah. 
I would so agree with you. That's probably part of it, but it's it's definitely kind of weird because you would it's an American company also, yeah. and you'd always think that the the Americans are the ones that are always the first ones to use yeah. new apps, new technology whatsoever, and yeah, just not the case. The next one. <laughs> It's an old topic. <laughs> Some of my followers are probably tired of hearing this, but it's checks. And I don't have to get into detail as because I I've gotten into detail about this yeah. on a lot of different occasions. But you know, I came to the US and um I obviously rented a room and I just was wondering how I should pay rent. I asked the landlord what his bank information is and he was all like, Oh, just um send me a check or cash in the mail. Here's yeah. the address. And I was like, huh? And I just didn't know that checks were a thing in the U.S. still. Yeah. I mean, to me, that those were just like something that existed back in the day. Uh -huh. That was like an archaic kind of thing. Yeah. Now, of course, I know that they're a thing and I have to use them all the time, too, for different reasons. But yeah, and then I, I didn't have checks because I didn't have an American bank account mm -hmm. and... My German bank account didn't have checks, yeah. <laughs> especially not like to use internationally. Yeah. So basically what I ended up doing, because I also didn't want to put cash in an yeah, envelope and too. send it in the mail. That's the, And the whole thing seemed so weird to me, too. I asked kind of a lot of friends at the time or my roommates mm -hmm. if that's normal that the landlord is asking for cash. Because if someone in Germany did that, you'd think that that's under a the scam, table. Yeah. yeah, that's a scam. That is something, something sketchy here. Yeah. Um, for some reason, at least in the Midwest... And I think in some other parts of the U.S., it's not that uncommon that rent is paid that mm. way. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've personally never paid rent with just cash. I would be kind of suspicious of that as well. Yeah, I had to do it several times for But several different landlords. It doesn't surprise me, especially around like university homes and stuff. Yeah, and like one of them was even one of those... Um, companies oh, like yeah? yeah it wasn't even like a one person landlord but it was one of those companies i always had to go to the office really? and pay rent either in cash or with a check did you get a receipt when whenever you would pay i don't remember that's like, if i were in your case and i was paying yeah. rent by via cash or with cash yeah. i would almost want a receipt just I to probably prove. did it was yeah. that was like back in 2017 i think that was the second place okay. i lived at but that was like you know, they had an actual office, like they were business. And I asked them if there's any way I could send them the money electronically. And they were like, no, sorry, mm -hmm. we only do this. Hmm. And I always had to walk there in person. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. And that those are just things that, you know, were kind of a shock to me, especially because you always hear that the U.S. is so progressive when it comes to payments and yeah. stuff. Like everything is electronic. Everything is just credit cards. You mm -hmm. never need cash. Um, you can pay with your phone everywhere. And that is all true. Yeah. And the weird thing to me was that for some reason, whenever it came to bigger amounts of money, suddenly, like, for example, rent, where it's like yeah. a few hundred, suddenly that you could not pay with a card anymore yeah, or suddenly weird. you could not wire the money or you yeah. know i did have a few other landlords later on that would accept like venmo or paypal mm -hmm. but yeah it was also never like bank transfer a lot of americans are kind of sketched out by giving out their bank account number yeah and i was i was gonna say that that was actually something weird for me was mm -hmm. like paying everything directly from my bank account when i moved here mm -hmm. like giving my bank information to like the gate set yeah. um I don't, I don't even know how to, like the public, um, public, uh, broadcasting. broadcast fee that you have to pay in yep. Germany. Uh, like they, they take it directly from my account yep. and like, that's super, that was super weird to me. Same thing with a lot of bills. I don't know exactly. how many you, you pay, but in a lot of yeah, cases yeah. you have to do like My a, internet comes directly. It's called a Lastenschrift. So like, a what's, uh, the, like a automatic withdrawal from your account. Yeah. Like auto pay basically, but yeah. you give the other party the permission ability. to take it from your account. Yeah. yeah. And like in the U.S., I would only do that with a credit card mm. because I can always argue that and it's not being taken directly out of my account. Right. So that that was something I was <laughs> suspicious of when I moved to Germany. I was like, oh, yeah. wait, this is normal, though. Yeah. And I obviously didn't understand why people were so hesitant about giving away their account number. I quickly learned that a lot of people just say that it's not safe and there's hackers, yeah. et cetera. Luckily, I've never experienced that, but I guess I just believe them. And yeah. I mean, um, since nobody ever wants to send money to my bank account either, because people are not used to that, I don't have to really give away yeah. my bank account number a whole lot. Um, but yeah, that was definitely... A situation where I was like, wow. I mean, I've watched Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio, but that <laughs> exactly. place in the past, I did, just didn't know that was still a thing today. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it just it's not represented in movies and shows a whole lot. It's, yeah, now that you say that, I, I would agree. But. <laughs> and I know that there's always a lot of Americans who will say, when I say this, a lot of comments are always, what, where are you living? I haven't used a check in 20 years. Yeah. And that's great for you. <laughs> 
But for, maybe it's the Midwest. Maybe yeah. it's just the, you know, institutions that I deal with. But there's kind yeah. of a lot of situations where I have to use a check. Like for taxes sometimes, like local yeah. taxes, they don't they don't give me a bank account where I can send yeah. the money to. I have to pay it via check or go there in person even. Yeah. <laughs> or even UPS. Like I shipped my Glühwein mugs over okay. from Germany to the US with UPS freight. So yeah. like not regular personal UPS. And they sent me a paper invoice, which first of all, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, sent me a paper invoice and it only had an address and it said, send the check here. Yeah, or it had cool. another word for check. I don't remember how they phrased it, but it was something that I didn't understand. Then I Googled it and it was like, it basically means you have to send okay. the check there. I don't know. I forget how they phrased it. But then I called and I was like, is there any way I can pay this electronically? And um, they did give me a number and then I asked my bank, but they said for my business account, it would be a kind of really high fee to do the bank wiring because like my bank has like fees yeah. to do that so it was like $80 or so oh, to wow. wire that money I was like well then I guess I'll just send the check <laughs> yeah super weird it's super weird that it's such a thing yeah so you know maybe I'm just unlucky but I have to deal with it kind of a lot and yeah. right at the beginning too and that's why it's such a big thing because like right at the beginning and then I think I kind of uh, forgot to finish telling the story how I solved the whole situation was I would ask my roommates to pay the check for me or write the check for mm -hmm. me and I would Venmo them. Yeah. So I would send them the money electronically and they would write it for me. Yeah. That makes, so, that makes that's sense. That's the way I solved that. Um, next up, I have, oh, now we're getting controversial. Uh oh. Christian fundamentalism. And all, like, what I mean by this is I, it's not just Christian fundamentalism, just like, how prominent religion is mm -hmm. in the U.S. And of course, I didn't know that to a certain extent. I was just really surprised when I arrived there how many young people, how many of my friends went to church every yeah. week or several times a week. And that was just not something I had ever experienced in Germany. And, you know, just like knowing that people are more religious, I did. I just didn't expect it to be that extreme yeah. that like people literally do this so often and like go to actual churches. Cause yeah. Going to church is not that common in Germany mm -hmm. anymore. I mean, churches are really struggling with attendance for, and they have for decades. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of, if you think about cliches in Germany, it's more older people who mm -hmm. still go to church. And I personally don't have a single friend or colleague of whom I knew that they went to church yeah. every week. Maybe there was, there were people, but I just, it was nothing that ever really came up. And none of my friends, even the ones who are, Christian and have not left the church yet, which is like a thing you can do in Germany where you like um, take out your registration from the church and you don't have to pay taxes to the church anymore because yeah. that's also a whole thing. Because that's a whole other topic. That's a whole other yes. topic. But like th that's like a thing that a lot of people do um, in their 20s or so when they kind of take control over their life. They're like, hey, I'm kind of registered with the Protestant or Catholic church in Germany, but I don't want to be. So I actively will withdraw my registration. Yeah. So even the friends who are still registered maybe go to church for christmas yeah and maybe easter but I th most of them just we call christmas. them priesters in, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the u.s <laughs> and that's like you know the most that people here kind of go to church in in my bubble in my experience obviously yeah. i'm from the city so it might still definitely be different in, in the country because i have family who live in a more rural area and they're kind of more involved in church mm -hmm. but more for like community reasons yeah um like they're part of the choir that and was something that confused me sorry i, yeah. I cut you off but when no. i when i moved over here was like people who i knew didn't actively go to church would still be like involved in like uh, Laga, like they would go to various camps, like church camps, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they weren't active participants yeah. in the church. That was yeah, it's because churches kind of take that position of like being the community, almost like um, Boy Scouts or yeah, something like, like that. Like the YMCA or whatever. Yeah. yeah, kind of like this local community thing. They offer different camps, as you said, or they offer music um lessons or something mm -hmm. like that or dance lessons or yeah just stuff like that or have like carnival events that's yeah. what i mentioned the other day like we would go to the local church for mm -hmm. carnival even though that's not like it wasn't like a particularly Christian, religious yeah it festival. wasn't like a mass or anything they just used the community yeah. space okay here's another thing i literally celebrated my sweet 16th birthday which is like wild in germany because <laughs> when you're legal to drink yeah in a church yeah basement because <laughs> they rent that space out <laughs> and um yeah my friend was kind of connected to that church um and i celebrated with her and that we celebrated our 16th birthday in the church basement and there was lots of beer and everything you know and that's yeah anyways i arrive in the u.s and suddenly a lot of my friends who, who just seem normal because a lot of cases in in germany the cliche is kind of like 
those people who maybe do go to church every Sunday, they're a little more like maybe introverted, socially like awkward almost. Mm -hmm. And I, I really don't mean to insult anyone. It's just kind of the image that that has, yeah. which is also kind of the problem of the church. It doesn't have the best image. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it's all these like normal people that normal college kids that are completely like extroverted. They go party, all these things. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday they tell me, oh, yeah, I have to go to church. Yeah. Like, huh? What? <laughs> and I think for Germans, it can maybe be a little bit difficult to understand. I think you understand mm. a little bit better now. Yeah, but of course. Yeah. And as far as when we're talking about church, I think Germans tend to think of like a Catholic church yeah. or a like a... Just a, very stiff. Very <laughs> stiff. But I think a lot of the people that you were probably interacting with weren't Catholic. I mean, there are Catholics that are still very devout. Yeah, and yeah definitely like, know a few Catholics. The, yeah, 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 me too. Um, but I think the majority of like this... You were, use the word fundamentalist, um, but just like the Christians that you interact with in the U.S. tend to go to very modern churches. Yeah. Like oftentimes they're in like old movie theaters that have been re renovated. And, and there's like live and music. And it's like a live music with like a rock band. Yeah. And they have lots of fun like community activities too. And um, it's where a lot of people have a strong social circle. Yeah. So I think it's hard to do like the one one to one uh, comparison with Germany sure. because those type of churches they do exist in Germany, but not very they're not very popular. Yeah. No, the whole like church they don't have landscape a lot of is visibility super different in the two countries. Yeah. Just like with all the independent churches, and yeah, in, in Germany you literally just have like the official German Catholic, official German Protestant. Those are the main things. Of course, yeah. you can be Muslim or whatever, but like in terms of Christianity, there isn't really. There aren't that many other options for you or yeah they're as you said they're not very visible people don't know yeah. <laughs> about them so you can't really compare it it was just definitely something that yeah. i just did not know that it was that present mm -hmm. in the u.s to a point where it was literally such a big part of people's everyday life because yeah. i just thought okay there's like you know certain groups that are very conservative in the u.s yeah. and those exist and there are certain bubbles mm -hmm. i just didn't know it was going to be my friends <laughs> yeah <laughs> i didn't yeah, yeah i just thought those would be people that would be different than me mm -hmm. but that did not turn out to be the case and the thing with christian fundamentalism that i also wrote down was that i was also surprised by things like meeting people my age who again were kind of cool normal mm -hmm. i got along with them and they would say things like oh i'm you know not having premarital sex or something mm -hmm. like that which i just never met anyone yeah. maybe i'd met like a few muslims that where their families wanted them to do that or mm -hmm. they maybe even wanted to do that but that was also not super like i'm i think i know more muslims who are not like that than muslims who are yeah in germany um but yeah that was just not something i had really ever encountered in, in yeah. real life <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's a, it's very different it's a very interesting topic to get into uh, i know yeah i know this is a controversial topic but i just i did it, not know it, yeah and i think i can I can confirm that the other way around, you know, having grown up in a community where a lot of people, I mean, I regularly went to church growing yeah. up. Um, and here I know when I did my internship, I was, I went to a, like a church here in Germany mm -hmm. uh, that was similar to what it was in the U.S. Oh, okay. And also here in Munich, there's actually a church that meets in a nightclub. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people who go to that nightclub have no clue that there's a church that meets in this as well. <laughs> Um, so there, there are those type of churches in Germany. They just aren't very well publicized, like yeah, I said. Yeah. But I can confirm that like the attendance is way different, and like the prevalence in the everyday culture is just not there in Germany yeah. or in Europe uh, as it is in the U.S. And it's crazy too because a lot of people in the U.S., like as I said, go to church every Sunday. At the same time, though, in the U.S., you don't get Sundays. Well, Sundays aren't a holiday in terms of like stores being closed, yeah. but in Germany <clears throat> they are historically for that reason yeah. right but in, at, at the same time in germany nobody really exactly. goes to church anymore on sundays so it's the day has kind of been repurposed for most people mm -hmm. so it's kind of like it's switched over yeah over the course of history <laughs> it's weird it's interesting it's very it's a very interesting observation yeah it's interesting developments i know that the black forest family made a video about that topic yeah. how like germany is losing their religion i think they mm -hmm. called the video yeah so it, that is just a very very interesting topic um but that was surprising to me okay Moving on, um, I don't know if this one's very controversial. Um, it's maybe something that not a lot of people would say out loud, but here I am <laughs> in German and direct, and it's circumcision. Yeah. So Beschneidung, that also just like never really is a topic, I feel like, when talking about the U.S., and yeah. I was totally not aware that um, 
I think I wrote down 70 to 80 percent of American men are circumcised yeah. and not necessarily for religious reasons, or most mm -hmm. of them are not yeah. circumcised for religi religious reasons or medical reasons. It's just kind of a custom. That, yeah, it's, it's very cultural. <laughs> yeah, it's just a cultural thing for whatever reason. I mean, I, I did make a video about that where I kind of explained the reasons. Um, I can link that for you guys. But in Germany, about 10 percent of German men or men living in Germany yeah. are circumcised. So it's a very big difference and it's definitely not the norm here nor in other European countries. Yeah, I would. I, that's my understanding as yeah. well. I think it's mostly in Europe, if you are circumcised, I feel like it's mostly for religious reasons, yeah. like either you're Jewish or Muslim. Yeah. Um, and most Christians, for example, or people who are culturally Christian in, in Europe uh, are not. It's, yeah. a, it's, a weird, it's a weird phenomenon that we have in the US. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was something I came over there and, um, that was a topic, you know, that came up and I started like asking people and yeah. then I started like doing some research and I was like, huh, Yeah. interesting. I just, I did not know this at all. So now you guys know in case you were wondering. <laughs> Yeah, um. <laughs> the American in me is like, uh, are we really talking about this right now? But at the same time, yeah, I mean, it's 100% a thing. And I personally am not a fan of it in the US because it's, it, I understand for religious reasons, I yeah. guess, but like you're making a choice for someone's body that they don't have a, a say in. Yeah. And it's such and a it's common unnecessary. thing. unnecessary. Yeah, it is unnecessary. And it's just like. In most cases, sometimes later yeah. in life, it is necessary. Yeah, there's always, of course, exceptions. Um, but. Yeah, when, then when you have a baby boy, I guess the doctor just like asks, so do you want us to circumcise him now or later? Yeah. And it's kind of like not even a real question from what I've been told, like because yeah. I've talked to a few parents about this mm -hmm. topic too. Um, so yeah, that's uh, in case you're planning on having your baby in the US or in Germany and you didn't know about this, in Germany, you're not going to be asked that. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like they just automatically circumcise your child without asking <laughs> no, you but in I think the US, but they, it's, it's kind of ex assume that you're exactly. going to want to. Yeah. It's the expectation or the assumption is probably yeah. probably more there in the U.S. Yeah, so that's that. Um, and the last point on my list is uh, another controversial topic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> um, and this has to do with gun violence. Uh -huh. Obviously, I knew that there was much more gun violence mm. in the U.S. than there was in Germany. However, I kind of also just assumed that it wasn't gonna affect me mm -hmm. in everyday life. I just thought, you know, okay, that's in gangs or. If you go to certain areas in certain cities, like in Chicago, if you go to the bad neighborhoods yeah. or I don't, I don't know even what I thought. I just didn't think that it was going to be part of my life. Mm -hmm. And so I arrived and within the first few weeks and months of being there, there were definitely a few times where I heard gunshots oh, yeah. in the distance. And that was not normal for me. Like I was like, oh, wow. Like I, I just didn't expect that. Yeah. You know, I, I was I thought that, you know the media was kind of making it a bigger, de bigger deal than mm -hmm. it actually is. And if you just live in a safe neighborhood and normal environment, it's not really going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, and then also there were a few like active shooter situations on campus mm -hmm. where nobody really got hurt. I don't think uh, it wasn't like, you know, one of those things that made the national news, Yeah. <laughs> which is sad, <laughs> but it was like, an active it definitely shooter. would make national news in Germany. Yes. Even if nobody got hurt, it would yeah. still make national news. But it would be that kind of situation where um, I guess someone on campus shot, maybe even if they shot into the air or something. Um, and then you would get um, a notification on in your email and text message from the university saying active shooter alert. You please take shelter, stay yeah. in place. And that was also something that I had never read before, yeah. obviously. Um, and that happened a few times. Um, I think that was maybe just bad luck. But during my first semester, I think it happened at least twice or three times. And it happened one more time later on uh, during my master's mm -hmm. where I was actually on campus. Because the other times I wasn't on campus, yeah. it was just kind of still weird because I lived close by. Yeah. And so you don't know what is going on. Um, or if your friends are on campus, if this is dangerous, obviously you get a lot more scared if it's the first time you experience yeah. this. Unfortunately, you get desensitized to it and you're like, kind oh, of, again. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, during my master's, it happened again where I was in on campus. I was in one of the university buildings and I heard the actual alarm. Oh, it yeah. sounded like a tornado huh. siren almost. Okay. So I didn't know at first that that's what it was. <laughs> and then I got a text message. Wow. And so I think I've told you this, this story before, mm -hmm. maybe even on the podcast, where it was with one of the other German studies um, 
grad students and we were still working late. I think it was already past 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. We were working on a project. And so then this happened and we kind of had to like lock ourselves into one of the rooms there. And I didn't really know how this stuff goes down, which I probably should have. But there wasn't like any official training or anything. And most Americans are kind of trained in high school and middle school, like at a younger age. We had active school active shooter training in high school yeah we'd obviously i mean kind of don't have that in germany at most schools at least and so there was the situation where since it was late the janitor knocked on the door Mm. and wanted to know if someone was in there and so what my first instinct was to just respond and the the american who was with me was like no 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 you can't say anything i was like oh oh that's right because like you don't know if that's the shooter and my german brain didn't even think about that um so we didn't say anything and that was interesting nothing happened again I don't I don't think anyone has been severely injured on the campus of the University of Cincinnati I'm, by gunshots at least yeah, I, I'm not during sure. my time. I'm not there. sure. <laughs> at least but I don't remember. It's like a common it's sad that it's a joke but or like a game that people play. I, I remember at, at UC that you would call it gunshots or fireworks. Yeah, like if you hear something, yeah, is it yeah, gunshots like, or I still And then can't, you wait for the sirens. I can't tell the difference still. Yeah. But yeah, Ben, my boyfriend, for example, he knows right away. Yeah, you can. Nor- if yeah, if you're used to shooting guns, you can normally tell yeah. the difference. But and then there was another incident right at, during my first semester where, like, it was my boyfriend at the time, who I'm not with anymore, but his roommate was a pizza delivery driver, and he got robbed at gunpoint. Like someone went like sat into his car Mm -hmm. um so i think he was delivering the pizza he was going back into this car into his car and someone was suddenly sitting in the back seat and held a gun to his head and made him drive to an atm that i guess the person knew didn't have i think i remember hearing about this back then but yeah yeah i mean i was very shocked by this and he had to withdraw all his money and it was on local news too apparently he was like a, a serial um Thief. Thief, yeah. He did this several times with the same ATM. But yeah, that was insanely scary for me because yeah. I guess, I mean, to this to this person that this happened to, it was scary too. But I felt like in the social circle, it wasn't talked about as much as, you know. You would have expected. Yeah, in my, in my world, you would talk about this for at least years. Yeah. <laughs> like this would be like top news yeah. in your whole friend group for a long time. That was that was crazy. Yeah, and then of course, um, just in general, if you look into local news, there's kind of a shooting almost every day in mm-hmm. Cincinnati. In most cases, it's between people who know each other. So it's not like you know people are just walking around shooting random strangers. Yeah, but it's it still happens a lot, and there's a lot of cases where I drive by, like especially in neighborhoods like OTR, mm-hmm. and where I drive by a, an intersection and there is um, like a lantern or a pole with yeah. lots of teddy bears or like balloons and yeah yeah. candles and usually like some kind of memorial for someone who died there um so yeah yeah i I just was gonna add the context too like like you were saying a lot of this takes place uh in the downtown areas Mm -hmm. um it's much less common in um suburbia yeah yeah for sure so i i remember when i moved from suburbia downtown i kind of grew up going to the downtown area quite often because of the church that i went to uh, it was located downtown, so I was more exposed to it. But for a lot of people, it was a big transition to move from suburbia into the urban center, yeah. where a lot of that was more prevalent. Yeah. So it's it's not normal for, for a lot of people in the U.S., but it's definitely something that you have to consider when moving into a more urban center yeah. in the U.S., that it's most likely more prevalent. I mean, it's definitely normal, though, I would say, for Amer- like Americans all over the place, that to expect people to have a gun. Yes, and to just hear about it on the yeah. news, even if it doesn't happen in your for neighborhood, sure. for sure. you definitely hear about it. And there's another story, actually. This happened not too long ago. This was like maybe about two years ago where I just like used to like to go on walks in mm-hmm. Clifton, um, close to the university where I lived. And there was one time when I was on a walk and I just walked my normal route. And the next day um, I heard in the news that someone was robbed at gunpoint. So like had a wow. gun pointed at them at that same intersection. And I, I don't remember if it was before or after I walked by there, but it was like 10 minutes before or after. And I remember because wow. I was talking um, to Ben on the phone, I think, or we were texting. So I kind of could kind of like track down what time I had been at that intersection. Yeah. And after that, I like, re- and this was also after dark. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like super late at night, but it was after dark. 
after that, I was kind of like, you know what? Maybe I should listen to everyone and not go on walks anymore, But which kind of sucks because it's yeah. taking away some of my freedom because I like to do. Yeah. Especially, I don't remember actually if it was the summer, but in the summer, for example, in Cincinnati, it's like almost impossible to go on a walk throughout, during the day because it's, it's so hot. hot and humid. But that was another thing where luckily I wasn't personally affected. I didn't see it or experience yeah. it, but I read about it and it was literally right at that point. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been me possibly. Yeah. So yeah, that's no, the topic. Um, I was going to ask you, like, have you, was it weird for you to see so many people, especially women at universities having pepper spray? Like that was I, like a, I got a pepper spray like a literally. For, yeah. Like your standard equipment for a, a college girl basically is to have a pepper spray with you. Yeah. And I got one like after the first few weeks, I think. And I, I didn't really like plan on getting one, but it was kind of one of those things where I had a night class, which ended maybe around 9 p.m. And since it was fall semester, this would be like after dark. And yeah. all my roommates told me, no, you cannot walk back from campus by yourself. You have yeah. to get an Uber. It was literally a five minute walk. You know where I lived my first semester, yeah. right? That was a safe path in my mind relatively safe yeah and so one of my roommates was like okay at least take this pepper spray she had like a few extra so she yeah. gave me one i was like okay i'll take it yeah. um it's fine and so that's how which you never had to use but it's i've never had to use it yeah no. Crazy. But crazy I still stuff. have one to this day because then, you know, over time, I kind of understood why these people are all so scared. Because um, yeah. at first I was always like, what What are you talking about? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's going to be fine. I'm, I'm an adult. It's fine. And I'm st I think I'm still not as paranoid as some Americans are. But, you know, I did, did things like, okay, I guess now I'm not going to go on a walk anymore yeah. after dark. There are a few things happened here and there. Where I was like, okay, guess not. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's the, maybe I should have structured my points differently because now it ended on kind of a sad note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, what can we do to liven this up more? Well, was there anything else that you wanted to add to any of my points? I don't think so. I think I okay. kind of added as I was uh, contrib or as you were as you were saying them. Okay. But I don't think I have anything additional to add. Okay. Um, besides that, I would I can understand why those would be things that you wouldn't necessarily see in media yeah. while living in Germany before moving to the U.S. Yeah. Like that tracks with me when I hear that. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. And I'm that sure there's more. I mean, if you guys can think of anything yeah. else uh, for both Germany or the U.S. where you feel like you went to the country and that is just not something that people are aware of, but it was super present when you were there. Let us know in the YouTube comments if yes. you're watching on YouTube. Or you can also reach us on Instagram, of course, Understanding Train Station. Shoot us an email, understandingtrainstation at gmail.com um patreon uh patreon.com slash understanding train station and we're actually doing our monthly hangout tonight after we record this so you already you already missed that one yes. <laughs> when you see this episode but the next one is going to be in march so yep. you can join that one if you want to i don't know is this is this our exit because <laughs> i guess this is our exit i'm trying i'm like sitting here racking my brain like what can i say that will make this funny or like leave people in a good mood and not depressed with uh but sometimes life is like that. <laughs> um, on the know, positive I've... note, there is great burgers and milkshakes in the U.S. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Oh, I, I got in such a good mood the other day because I made myself a milkshake. Yeah, an American-style milkshake, yes. not the runny one yes. you get in Germany. Yes, oh, and I was in such a good mood. Such a good mood. I made a peanut butter milkshake. Nice. That's the most American thing you could say, I think. Yes. Also, I... Um, because I had leftover peanut butter from the peanut butter milkshake, I actually don't eat that much peanut butter. Mm -hmm. I love it, but I don't eat it that often um and i made a recipe that called for celery which like the long stalks of celery and not like the chunk of celery that i feel like when you say celery in german you think of like the root mm -hmm. do you know what i'm talking about i think so yeah now i i when i think of celery i think of the american like uh -huh. long and yeah. I, I feel like most americans don't know like the roots okay of them. Mm -hmm. but for me like making a putting peanut butter inside the celery and eating it gosh yeah i've heard of that so good. i've never tried that i just can't imagine it's so good i've heard of people saying that it made me so happy <laughs> i was in such a good mood so maybe that'll put you in a good mood too yes hopefully you all have a great rest of your day thank you guys so much for listening and watching and we will be there for you again in two weeks on thursday until then <laughs> cheers ciao